Mr. Willis. Yes! Max Payne, why is he smiling like that? Welcome to another episode of The Completionist. And today, guys, we're going to play a game that is kind of from my childhood, because that's when it came out. But I shouldn't have been playing it, because it's one of those 17-plus games. But I still play it, because it's a really dope game. And that, my friends, is Max Payne. That game is so dark. Max Payne. I have been looking forward to reviewing this game for a very long time. I remember when this game was released, how many parents were up in arms and very angry about how violent and how dark this game was. But Batman, I'm depressed already, and I haven't even heard the story of the game. You want to know what's more depressing? The fact that Mark Wahlberg was Max Payne in the Max Payne movie. Spoiler alert, it wasn't good. I don't think anybody needed that spoiler alert, or that movie. So here's a little disclaimer for everyone watching at home, because I know that we have such a young fan base. When I say this game was dark, I mean it. The storyline can be very graphic and is filled with adult themes. Alright, you've been warned. All video games are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Viewer discretion is advised. So the game opens with a pretty ominous intro. We are greeted with sirens, police, radio distress calls, and we finally get a shot of our main character, Max Payne atop a skyscraper in New York City. Then we go back three years into the past and find out what happened to our jolly buddy Max. He seemed like such a nice and chipper detective in the first few comic book panels we saw. Oh yeah, this story is told to us through cinematics, but mainly through comic book panels. We get our first taste of gameplay as Max enters his family home. After doing a bit of shooting and killing, you find out that druggies hopped up on a drug called Valkyr have not only murdered Max's wife, but also his brand new baby born baby. Sheesh, now that's a way to open up a game. Fast forward to slightly before the opening scene, and now Max has joined the DEA and is working as an undercover agent in a mob crime family. He is trying to take down the network that is producing and distributing Valkyr. Unfortunately, his cover is blown, and Max is pegged as public enemy number one. So now he has the criminals after him, as well as the law enforcement. Max must get to the bottom of all the corruption and finally rest the souls of his wife and child. Alright, welcome to recovery therapy, everyone. Would anyone like to start us off here? Ah oh, yes, Max, go ahead. Druggies burst in my house and killed my family. Now I'm the enemy, and I have to kill everyone in my path to get peace of mind. Holy sh**. Max Payne is literally a film noir. You've got your tragic hero, mixed in with the femme fatale Mona Sachs, and the narration of Max's thoughts. As graphic and as heartbreaking as it is, I really do appreciate the way this game opens. The reason being is that it really sparks this drive in you to want to take out some of the bad guys and get revenge for your family, all while figuring out the plot. That's exactly what this game is, a very bloody and violent revenge story. Hell, I enjoyed this game's story so much that it inspired me to start my early career in filmmaking. Video games telling interesting stories? Holy crap! But, you know, someone beat me to the punch. A very horrible punch. Someone spiked the punch. The one thing that does somewhat get old pretty quickly is Max's retelling of his tragic tale. He's telling it the entire time you're playing the game. It's almost as if he just wants to keep reminding everyone about what matters to him. His wife, his kid, and his job. Payne, I need you to go deep undercover. He wanted me to go deep undercover. But all I can think about is my wife, our baby, and my job. Max, you... You realize that you're talking out loud. I can hear you. I kept thinking to myself, if only the commissioner knew what was really going on in my head. If only he could relate to my pain of not having my wife and kid. The only thing I have is... this job. Yeah, Max, about that. My wife. My kid. My job. Max, about your job, we need my to- My wife. My kid. You know what, Max? We have to let you go. The commissioner fired me. Oh, that for, was it. For Christ's my sakes, Max! My life is officially Max. over. First my wife. Max, would you please just- My kid. We get it, man! My job!
Developed by Remini and Rockstar, Max Payne was originally released on the PC in 2001 and then again on the PS2 later that same year. That being said, the graphics can seem a little bit dated. They are quite blocky and looks very much like Grand Theft Auto 3, which also was released that same year. Dang! 2001 was a great year for video games. 2001, a video game odyssey. Playing this game on the PC really opened my eyes. It's literally night and day with how much better the game looks, feels, and handles on the PC versus any other console that was on the market. Eventually, it was released to the GameCube and the Xbox. In my personal experience, the original Xbox release of it had the best frame rates. But I am able to look past the lesser graphics because, come on, that's no way to just judge a game like that. Just like Grand Theft Auto 3, Max Payne has very dark tones throughout its character and level design. It definitely has that evil lurking around the corner feel to it. The level designs themselves are pretty unique and interesting in regards to how they relate to the story and plot, but each hallway and each area feels very cookie cuttery. But that doesn't mean that Remedy didn't try to make some unique levels. There are even these insanely cool levels where Max has been injected with Valkyr and he is in a nightmare where he reimagines the incident of his family's murder as if it was his fault. Visually, it's definitely the best segment in the game, and the sound design will literally freak you the hell out. As I said before, the story is not only told through cinematics, but also through comic book style panels. I absolutely loved this presentation. I prefer to see how the story unfolds through the graphic novel more than the relatively blocky looking cutscenes. And don't just think that because it feels like a book that you'll be left reading the entire time. The Max Payne cast of characters are played by some very talented voice actors. Max's narration gives you that film noir feeling. You can almost see him as a modern Humphrey Bogart. In fact, it's even alluded to within the game. I had met Lupino only once. The gangster ran all his rackets through his right-hand man, Vinny Gagnini. Gagnini was a high-strung whiner on the verge of breaking apart, like an overamped Energizer bunny. He had the brains to run the business, but he lacked the balls, always falling short, taking his frustration out on underage addicts and call girls. For the most part, everyone gets the story across quite well. And believe you me, this story is chilling in this game. Yeah, my story is chilling. My wife. Max! Helping convey these dark feelings is the music. It is some of the most evil and depressing stuff I've ever heard. You really feel immersed when you're treading through the levels while these tracks are playing. This game has some of my favorite music in it. One thing that always got me in a weird way was Max's face. I know what they were trying to do, they wanted that menacing, on the verge of cracking look to him. But sometimes it could be a tad bit comical, seeing his grinning face all the time. Yet to be fair, they did base the face of Max Payne off the creator slash writer of the series. Story? Pretty great. Presentation? Yeah, I can get behind that. Gameplay? Pretty solid. Max Payne is a third person shooter. This means that the camera is always over Max's shoulder. Or behind him. Around, around, you see them in front of you. You use a multitude of different weapons to dispatch New York's lowlifes. Weapons range from lead pipes to shotguns and even legendary desert eagles. But my absolute favorite weapon in this game is the bat. Yes, the baseball bat. Oh, how awesome you are. I called him Batty. The only way this could have been better is if I had two bats. Two Anybody want a yoo -hoo? What? I didn't say too bad the zoo bat. I said two bats, as in two baseball bats. Get out of here, two bat. Oh, hey, Max. Just said hi to your wife and kid. My wife. My kid. Oh, wait, they're dead. Too bad the zoo bat. Yeah, at least I'm not the Finito Brothers. As just a plain shooter, this game lacks just a little bit. You feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. You could be pretty sloppy with your aiming and still get some pretty impressive headshots more often than not. Yet I don't think that quite hinders the gameplay by any means. I actually found it makes it a little more endearing. Within that, Max Payne is more than just an over the shoulder shooter. Let's discuss Max Payne's revolutionary bullet time. Bullet time lets you slow down time and be able to see bullets fly through the air in slow motion. You can jump in a multitude of directions while in slow motion and still be able to aim in real time. This can make for some pretty impressive and unique gameplay. The bullet time meter drains when activated and gets restored based on the kills you pull off. 
This was brand new at the time and really made this game stand out amongst other shooters. The Matrix had just come out a few years prior to it, so everyone's dream was able to dodge bullets and slow down time. Just like Neo, the price gouging actor. In fact, it seemed that this game may have paved the way for Enter the Matrix just a few years later. Yet Max Payne created this staple that would cross over into its sequels as a prominent feature. And as gimmicky as it may seem, it's definitely awesome. The only downside of Max Payne's gameplay is that there's not really a growth plan for Max. You're just as powerful from the very beginning of the game as you are at the very end of the game. If it wasn't for Bullet Time, I think the gameplay would really have suffered. Bullet Time does keep this game surprisingly fresh. Boss characters are just as vulnerable as a generic thug you usually shoot, which is cool. Kind of. I don't know. Maybe it humanizes everyone in a video game where you can slow down time and jump creepily high. Well, Gerard, just imagine if this game was made today. I'm sure it would have some form of dubstep to it or something. He wanted me to go deep undercover. Well, all I can think about is my wife, my baby, and my job. The only thing I have is... This job. After enduring the insanity of Max Payne's plight, it all comes down to this. The Valkyr drug was created initially as a serum to create super soldiers. Obviously, the drug came with a lot of repercussions. After Max follows the line of he said, she said through several different cartels, it all points to one person, Nicole Thorne, the CEO of a mysterious corporation called Acer. Nicole is also responsible for the death of Max's wife and kid. Wait, 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 wait. All of this evil was done by the budget computer company Acer? No, Greg, that is Acer. This is Acer. For once, you're the confusing one. Max's wife saw documents that verified that the drug was still in production, so Nicole sent a hit squad to take her and her baby out. Because babies seem like such a huge security threat. I don't know, man. You ever been on an airplane? They're kind of scary. On his long and twisted road, Max discovers that there is a secret government organization called the Inner Circle that does some shady business. It turns out that Nicole Thorne was blackmailing them, and they must bow to her every word. They promise Max that if he gets his revenge and kills her, that they will take care of him through the judicial system. Enter Max into a big-ass building for a huge firefight. It was a fire fight! Max Payne was one of the last games that I experienced in the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox era to really incorporate cheat codes. While everyone complains cheat codes are just that, cheat codes, I find that sometimes cheat codes can be a good thing. You can type in the variety of cheat codes at the pause menu to help make your most excellent and dark journey more twisted. Whoa! Excellent bloodbath journey! Once you've beaten the original setting of Fugitive Mode, you unlock two more modes. New York Minute, which is a time-based mode, and Hard Boiled. The difficulty of the game does jump up quite a bit, but you really don't get anything for beating the game on New York Minute. However, if you beat the game on Hard Boiled, you'll unlock the final difficulty, which is Dead on Arrival. Mind you, you can use cheats on all these modes except Dead on Arrival. I mean, you can if you want to, but if you want the secret finale ending, you'll need to beat Dead on Arrival without using cheat codes. Dead on Arrival mode not only gets more challenging with the difficulty raise, but you only have up to six saves, so you gotta be on your A game when it comes to playing Max Payne. When you finally beat the game for the fourth time through on Dead on Arrival, instead of being shown the credit screen, you will teleport to a room with a bunch of guns and infinite bullet time with an army of men with jackhammer shotguns. This can be quite fun and really frustrating, but if you're really good like I am, you'll go ahead and beat it no problem. And the payoff debatably isn't really worth it. I'm not really a big fan of behind the scenes stuff, I mean I guess it's cool, but I don't know. You get to see a cast photo of everyone who worked on the game, some of the model shots they worked with for the game. The challenge itself was fun, but the payoff, eh, not so much in my opinion. B 
Beating the normal game is actually quite a breeze. The gameplay is simple, easy to pick up, and overall it's fun! Yes, you can use cheat codes to kind of plow your way through the game, but the big challenge is to beat the game on dead on arrival mode without cheat codes. This can be pretty tough. I encourage those of you who like a challenge to give it a shot, because it's not an easy feat. Be prepared for a lot of loading screens from multiple deaths. Max Payne's story and bullet time mode is really what makes this game so memorable. However, the gameplay and the graphics tend to be the worst and kind of the lamest to subpar part of this game. Luckily, in my opinion, the narrative tied with an ambitious Matrix mode makes the game worth the trip. A lot of people complain that Max Payne's gameplay does get quite repetitive and stale, but because of bullet time, I think it actually does the exact opposite. It's fun, it's refreshing, and it's really unique to some other gameplay mechanics and games out there today. The story is one gigantic mess of fun that really pulls you in. You really enjoy who Max kind of becomes. He goes from being a loving father to this kind of demented, revenge-driven guy who just wants to really murder everyone. And, well, who can relate to that? To the murder? Yeah. Fair I mean... Enough. Fair enough. I mean... Slow motion murder, you know? However, in terms of the end bonus, I wouldn't say it's really worth that extra step to play the other modes. New York Minute is kind of fun, and Dead on Arrival can be quite a pain in the ass. With that in mind, guys, this game gets my completionist rating of... Play it. Like a steak. Or a fish. Play a fish! Play it! That's all the time we have for today, guys, so please, as always, leave your positive and negative comments in the box below. If you missed last week's episode, click right here, and if you're from the future, click right here. I also want to give a very special thank you to Michael, or Skitch, who's a friend of Proton John's. He's uh, been a new supporter of the show. He created the Max Payne dubstep that you guys heard in the episode. Uh, you can check out his music in the description below. And finally, after a month and a half hiatus, we are back with more episodes of Super Beard Brothers. For those of you guys who don't know, I have a second channel called That One Laser Clown, and it has a show there called The Super Beard Brothers. It stars myself and my good friend Alex Bastiani. But, since we're back, we did a little more planning, a little more integrating, a little more awesome, and we brought Greg on as our third beard brother. And a lot of you guys are thinking, he doesn't have a beard. That's okay. He's funny, we forgive him. If you want to check out the Laser Clown channel, go ahead and give that a click right below. And feel free to go ahead and go through all of our game libraries right now. We're doing uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Wild Arms, obviously. And we're finishing up Mario Land 2 with Davis from the Warp Zone. The beautiful thing about the Laser Clown channel on Super Beer Brothers is that the games we let's play on that show, we're actually going to be doing a review on the completionist, so you kind of get a little behind the scenes action as to what's to come in the future of here on that one video gamer. Now, if you excuse me, the revenge of Batty! My wife. What wife? Oh, kid. My job. Uh, my wife. Kid. 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 Job. My life is officially over. First my wife. My kid. My job. My kid. 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 My kid.